tenor Mark Thompson. Yes, once again, Thompson Tooth Tinsel for shinier, more festive teeth presents the story of Danny, the opera dog. New York City, the stage door of the Metropolitan Opera. It's a Friday night as a pearl gray limo pulls up to the curb and a doorman opens the back door and the diva emerges. With her great entourage, she parades past the photographers. One more, Miss Manicotti, this way. She disappears into the opera house, an old Springer Spaniel with a cape around his shoulders, <laughs> strolls unnoticed through the stage door. Hiya, Jimmy. Past the guard, gets on the elevator, and rides up to the sixth floor where the opera animals have their dressing rooms. <laughs> the horse from Rigoletto, the cat from Hansel and Gretel, the pigeons from La Boheme, the sheep from Parsifal, the goat from Pagliacci, and of course the camels from Aida and the elephant as well. And in the dressing room next to Danny's, a collie named Marcel, a younger dog with very pretty hair, Danny's understudy. Huh, understudy. Huh, well, I never missed a show in my life. Uh, ridiculous. He passed Marcel's dressing room door. It was closed. <laughs> Probably in there scratching his privates. And he came to his own dressing room. There was his gold water dish. The picture of himself and Birgit Nielsen. Oh, no, there was a great gal. They don't make it like that anymore, huh? Picture of him and Placido Domingo. Oh, what a talent he was. One of him and Leontine Price, autographed. To Danny, who is doggone terrific. Gosh, he was a class actor. He jumped up into his big oh, leather chair oh. and looked into the mirror with the light bulbs. Hmm. Boy, this weather is rough on my hair. Look at that. But I better do something about these floppy lips, too. <laughs> he reached for his makeup kit, and just then... Yeah, who is it? Uh, it's me, Murray. Oh, come on in. Hey, Danny boy, you're oh. looking great. Oh, come on. The old dogster, hey, huh? How's it going? Come on, quit well, messing with my hair there. I just scratching your head. Hey, no. what you got tonight? Giovanni, <laughs> right, huh? Mozart, that's great. Who's singing? I don't know. New cast. Did you see the ad I put in Opera News, huh? Oh, oh, oh. Look at this. Oh, oh. Okay, see? Mm. Full page, Ooh. color. Oh. Nice big picture of you, huh? Oh. And above it, very tasteful, Murray Richards and Associates salutes Danny on his 300th performance at the Metropolitan Opera. What a dog. Oh. How about that, huh? You like that, huh? Oh, it's very nice. Yeah. Nice? Yeah. Nice? What? I got a full page. I put a full page in Opera yeah. News and it's nice. Well, why the old picture? It's a good picture. Well, that picture's from 1982. You look good in 1982. <laughs> what are you trying to tell me, Murray? Huh? What's that supposed to mean? I'm telling you, it's a good picture. You were, you were young, you had that gleam in your eye, you were, you were slimmer. Oh, well, who the Sam Hill is that? Oh, you want me to take care of that? I hate it when that happens. Uh, I'll take care of it. Hey, hey, would you mind? You're making my dog nervous. Thanks. All taken care of. Good. What else can I do for you? Well, could you talk to that tenor about him singing right into my ear? I'll talk to him. The director wants me to climb up on his lap, but that doesn't mean he can sing three inches away from my ear. You know, it's cruelty to animals. I'll see what I can do. Boy, it hurts. I mean, a guy is a half a step sharp. A little Listerine wouldn't hurt either. But Danny, <laughs> can I get you some water? Anything more kibble? Can I brush your hair? I don't eat kibble. Okay. Twelve years you've been my agent, Murray, and you forgot I don't eat kibble. I'm sorry. You're supposed to know these things. Well, let's not quibble over kibble. <laughs> uh, how about that new contract? How's that going? Uh, they're not going to budge, Danny. Oh. Five hundred is tops. Hmm. Uh, it, it's more than anyone else gets. Not even the elephant gets that. Well, a dog at La Scully gets a percentage of the house. Yeah. That's Italy. <laughs> and remember, if you don't want to work, you, you know, if you don't want to work, they can get Marcel for 200. Oh, Marcel? 
What about Marcel? Okay, okay, easy. Don't you ever say his name to me again, you hear? Oh, okay, down, down, sorry. Marcel, I mean, the guy is late for cues, he misses his mark, stands and stares at the audience, drools, doesn't know one opera from another, total amateur. Okay, okay. Marcel. What about the lady? Did you talk to the director? It's gotten to brighten up for my entrance, you know. I, I, I talked to him. I need a follow spot. I mean, why put a dog on stage if nobody can see him, huh? Danny, I gotta say this, okay? What? Don't bite me. I'm only the messenger. <laughs> the director said, I'll give him more light if he loses 40 pounds and gets his hair colored. What? That's, that's what he said. They're talking about me being heavy. Danny, we've had to let your collar out three times in the past year. Well. And your lips are getting floppy. Oh. And one more thing. They want you to start using flea powder. Here. Get, get out of here. Go, go. Run, run. Now, you may be wondering, why does the Metropolitan Opera pay a dog like Danny so much for performing in operas? Well, it's because animals are an important part of the opera. And here to explain why is New York Sun's senior opera critic, Alton B. Leroy, Jr. Thank you. An animal on stage in an opera has an effect on the audience similar to that of caffeine. You sit for a couple of hours listening to large people who can't act sing in a foreign language and your chin sinks down to your chest. But if a dog walks out on the stage, or a horse, a camel, even a little kitty cat, the audience sits up, pays attention, there's electricity in the air. Next to nudity, naked people. All right. Next to that, Animals get people's attention. <laughs> With an animal, there's always a chance of something unexpected happening. There may have been no drama on stage whatsoever for two hours, but now there might be. <laughs> there is a chance this dog might leap at the tenor and grab him by the throat. There is, of course, the chance of, Italian term is, defecazione. <laughs> what we call the uh, poop factor. And, uh, <laughs> If the animal does this, uh, this will be, for half of the audience, the uh, highlight of the entire performance. <laughs> they will go home smiling, thinking, boy, those sheep in Act 4, weren't they a bunch of cut-ups? <laughs> that is why the opera uses animals. People are paying 100, 200, 300 bucks a seat, in addition to all the artistry. They want some entertainment. Thank you, opera critic Alton B. Leroy, Jr. No problem. Danny, the opera dog, sat in his dressing room doing his hair while he waited to go out for Don Giovanni. And while he did, he put on a recording to calm his nerves. Boy, that burns me up. Flea powder, telling me I need to lose weight. Hmm. Take a look around compared to some of these people. I'm frightfully anorexic. Go away. Leave me alone. What? What's this? Somebody shoved a note under the door? Hmm. Dear Danny, it is with deep regret and great gratitude for your years of service. Tonight's performance will be your last at the Met. Well, I'll be jiggered just like that. My last show, my last chance to realize my lifelong dream, sing at the Met. <laughs> That night, Danny stood in the wings, warming up for his singing debut. Hey, hey, Danny. Danny, I just want to say I heard the news, and I'm terribly sorry. Uh, anything I can do for you, just let me know, okay? Anything. Yeah, well. Come, Marcel. <laughs> they need you in wardrobe. It was a memorable night at the opera, as senior opera critic Alton B. Leroy Jr. wrote the next morning in the New York Sun. The singers were in exquisite form, particularly the dog, who joined in the duet La Ci Darem La Mano, giving it a plaintive and burnished legato tone in his upper register that brought the audience cheering to its feet. And after the performance, all of the opera animals came by Danny's dressing room and gave him some going away presents. <laughs> the horse gave him a lucky horseshoe, and the cat gave him a tennis racket. And the pigeons gave him a statue. And the sheep gave him a sweater. And the goat gave him some goat cheese. And the elephant gave him an ivory comb. And the camels gave him a pack of smokes. 
Thanks a lot, you guys. Uh, you've been so swell to work with. Uh, I'll remember you as long as I live. And he collected his pictures and his water dish, and he had it out the stage door for the last time. So long, Jimmy. <sighs> what a night. He headed up the avenue toward home, smiling. One of the few performers at the Met to make his debut and give his farewell performance on the same evening. What a night. On yom, on yom, yom, bende, on east or all a bende, don't in no chente on board. On yom, yom, bende, on dom, le pen, yom, east or a don in no chente on board. Thank you, Roy Blunt, Mr. Al Franken, Mr. Tom Keith, and the story of Danny, the opera dog of New York. Mm -hmm.